Hi, this is Tapcat. Welcome to the sixth episode of XCOM Enemy Unknown. In the team's last outing, we saw them complete a bomb mission successfully, which is no small feat. Unfortunately, while no one was killed, there were a number of injuries, so it's a bit of a depleted crew that will be trying to capture the latest downed UFO here today. And by depleted, I simply mean there are two rookies on the squad today, Vega and Henry, along with two names that may be familiar to you if you've watched any of our previous episodes, Robinson and Lefebvre. And it looks like Vega has the honor of discovering the first aliens of the day, a pair of sectoids. Vega and Robinson were both pretty far forward of the others, so the commander calls them back for a tighter defensive formation. And now we'll see what the aliens have up their sleeves. And not unlike the soldiers, it looks like the aliens are satisfied to just try to get better positioning. And I think if you asked Vega or Henry, they would say they could use better positioning still because neither one of them really has a shot here. And for that matter, neither does Robinson. And the dry spell continues even after Vega moved up specifically to try and get a better angle. It's just not happening. So they hunker down to weather the storm as best they can. Once again, it looks like the soldier's patience has been rewarded as this sectoid has clearly moved forward farther than was safe. And Robinson wastes no time in making him pay the ultimate price. That's one down, but that still leaves one very live and very dangerous sectoid to go. And speak of the devil. They're trying to pull back. It's actually very good that he came forward like that. The last thing these soldiers want to do is search through the woods trying to find him. You know, he was out of their visual range, so the situation was actually much more dangerous when they didn't know where he was. And apparently the sectoid has decided he agrees because he has ducked back out of sight. And actually rather than chase him through the woods, they're going to hunker down in a defensive posture and see if he'll come to them. But since he didn't, they'll give it another try. They're starting to lose ground. So after hearing lots of bumps in the night, 
he has obviously made his presence known and now they know where to find him Henry moved up but he still doesn't have a shot so Robinson's going to get behind this tree and he has him flanked and let the goo fly they should be relatively safe for the moment. That's two sectoids up and two down to stay. Come get some. If this UFO matches the pattern we saw in the previous UFO that was shot down, there should be another patrol of two aliens out here somewhere. And then, of course, the pilot in the ship. The commander will want them to find that other patrol, if at all possible. The worst thing that could happen to them is to be in the middle of a firefight with the pilot and then have two more opponents come into play. They know where the pilot is. That's not really a problem. So they might as well try to eliminate the wild card of that other patrol, if at all possible. Quiet. Did you hear something? And while they search, let's take a minute to discuss a concern that we had before this mission even started. Specifically, whether this group is going to rely too heavily on Robinson alone to get the job done here today. While he has put up a solid seven kills over the course of four missions coming into today, and no one else on this squad has even a single one to their credit. Obviously, the two rookies, Vega and Henry, don't have any experience. Uh, I'm sure they did well in training or they wouldn't be here. But you never know how a rookie is going to do until they actually face enemy fire. Some, like Robinson, rise to the challenge, while others pull a Rodriguez and just can't get it done, as viewers of our first episode might remember. But arguably, the biggest question mark here today is Lefebvre, uh, where Robinson has had a, a steady flow of success. This is her fourth mission, and she has yet to get a single kill. Uh, she's missed a number of shots, and honestly, some of the other soldiers are starting to question whether she deserves her spot on the primary squad. They really need her to step it up today, and hopefully she'll rise to the challenge. And of course, anyone who was worried about Robinson having to do everything himself can only be more concerned after watching that first battle. You notice there were two sectoids, and he took them both down. At this point, they've been searching the woods for some time now, chasing noises in various directions, and just haven't had any luck tracking down that other patrol. I suppose it's possible there isn't even another patrol, or uh, maybe all of the remaining aliens are inside the ship. So they're going to end up doing exactly what the commander did not want to, rather than just continue to stumble around out here indefinitely. They are going to search the ship itself. You hear that? And this is unusual. Robinson is actually dashing forward, and he does reveal the pilot in the process. So he will not be able to hunker down before the alien gets a shot off. Hopefully that does not leave him too vulnerable. Henry checks, but he doesn't have anything remotely resembling a good shot. Vega decides to simply head back behind full cover. The odd thing is that as much time as they spent maneuvering around the ship before approaching it, they're really not in a good position here. None of them have a clean angle at all. Pilot looks like he's getting ready to take a shot. Ah, uh, Robinson is gone. I don't think we're alone out here. I've got a visual. And 
And so exactly what the squad did not want to happen is taking place. They're engaged in combat with the pilot and this patrol finds them. So with three aliens now to fight, this could get out of hand in a big hurry and they need to start getting some kills here and above all, not lose any more soldiers. Vega has what basically amounts to a coin flip's chance of hitting him with her machine gun. Rather than leave herself vulnerable for that, she opts to throw a grenade. And like that, there's one less sectoid to deal with. Unfortunately, that pilot seems to be very effective at finding cover, and he's not going to be easy to take out if he keeps that up. Meanwhile, this sectoid looks like he's taking the offensive and targeting Vega. Ugh. And so no sooner does Vega manage to kill one of them than she is killed in turn. And Lefebvre has panicked. Uh, at least Henry is still okay, but with just two squad members still alive and one of them just helpless in the grip of a panic attack, we are teetering on the brink here of the entire squad being wiped out. And now the sectoid shoots at Henry. I thought for sure he had him hit, but it looks like he's just missed him. And... Now the pilot is using suppressing fire on him. So poor Henry, he's catching it from all sides. The fave appears to have recovered her, her wits and is targeting the sectoid. And puts him down. And hopefully that panic attack will represent rock bottom for Lefebvre and she's going to start coming out of this. Uh, Henry needs her right now. It's too late to help the others. But they're both in a life or death struggle here, and I hope she realizes that and does what needs to be done. Henry once again checks, but has no real shot. And the fave, she's not running away, is she? You know, the way this alien stays behind full cover, it's almost like he's using the XCOMers own tactics against them. And normally the aliens tend to be very aggressive and they move forward to try to get a better shot. And this one is staying back and really giving the soldiers fits as they try to get a clean angle at them. It looks like Lefebvre is simply trying to work around in an effort to flank them. Henry, in the meantime, will have little choice but to continue hunkering down behind the cover he's got. And no real change in the outsider's approach. He does fire at Lefebvre for a change, but she's hunkered down behind full cover just like Henry is, and that's too much for the alien to overcome. So this is settled into a bit of a stalemate. The Fae moves forward hoping to break it. She has no shot, so she chooses to go for a frag grenade instead. So this will not only wound him, it should give Henry a better shot, and it does, but we're still not looking at a great one. So he moves forward and opts to go for a frag grenade himself. And so they do manage to put the last alien down, but sadly, too late to help either Robinson or Vega. So the mission is technically a success, but I hardly think they'll be celebrating tonight. And despite the lack of, shall we say, operational perfection on this mission, 
Both Lefebvre and Henry have been granted promotions. Lefebvre is now a corporal, while Henry has been assigned to the heavy class. In addition, the commander does now have more resources, both for research and engineering, as well as some items to sell in the gray market. With the ranks of healthy soldiers at an all-time low, the commander decides to bring in some fresh blood and make sure they can continue to staff these missions appropriately. And two days later, one of the commander's plans bears fruit when the engineering crew completes a satellite uplink. The base's facilities using up most of the available power at the base, the commander starts work on another generator. And while he's at it, he starts building an access lift down to the second level. Getting more satellites in orbit is a key part of the commander's strategy, so he orders up three more. And just a couple of days after that, we see another round of alien abductions. The commander reviews the countries that need his help, the rewards they offer, their panic levels. Uh, he even checks the situation room to make sure he's fully aware of the panic levels in the other countries in that continent uh, because his choice here will affect all of those countries potentially, not just the one he goes to or doesn't go to. And taking everything into account, he decides to head to Japan. And if casualties have thinned the ranks a bit more than any of us would prefer, at least the surviving soldiers are all healthy and available to go on this mission. That's all for this episode. Thank you for watching, and please join us next time when we travel to Sapporo, Japan, for Operation Falling Throne.